I have a small audience and I I want it to stay like this. And this might sound counterintuitive or a contradiction to what you hear out there. Uh, I feel like uh, these days in business, it's all about growing the biggest audience, like get more followers, get more likes and make millions and so on. And I chose a different path. I chose the path of a small but very, very authentic audience for MetaHelm, my business consulting, business strategy consulting firm and coaching also. Um, why? And I want to share why why I made that choice because if you, in case you're wondering, like everybody says you should have as many followers as possible and you're, you're doing the opposite. Does it yield results even? Is it just because it makes you happy or because you're making more friends or is it actually beneficial to your business? Well, obviously, <laughs> if I do this video, it's to also tell you that it is very beneficial to my business. So my journey building my audience with MetaHelm started around 2018. I had launched MetaHelm for about two years. And at first, I didn't need to intentionally put in too much of, of an effort. I had a big enough network to get some inbound leads. And I was very busy delivering, delivering the work and figure out how to get myself organized. And so in my first two years, I was really, really active uh, making money, uh, delivering work, and then setting up my core systems like finances and business uh, website and, and, and such. But then I knew I would have to communicate and I knew that content marketing would be a valuable strategy for me, but that's all I knew. I didn't know how, I didn't know, I had. I knew nothing else. So I, uh, I, I dabbled a little bit into writing and uh, and then I thought, you know, if I if I write, uh, if I hired a uh, a writer, it would accelerate the process. And then later on, I also thought, hey, if I have people that can help me uh, reach out to and contact more people and get some um, some people to connect with me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is my primary platform for 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 my business to grow my business. Uh, I have more, and I'm going to launch more. But for now, that's that's LinkedIn that really is um, is is very appropriate for my from for my business. And I, uh, one day I, I was catching myself wanting to connect with more people and I was uh, going on LinkedIn and trying to figure out, you know, how do I reach to more people, more people, people I don't know and so on. And I decided to hire uh, the, this, this, this firm, this company that installed an automated system on my LinkedIn account that would connect to, uh, to many people a day uh, that would match a certain profile. So... I'm trying to work with, uh, at the time I was trying to work with startup tech companies. It was quite broad also. My positioning wasn't as tight as it is today, but uh, it, 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 really, it really worked really well on the technical side. Like in a matter of three months, I had thousands of connections, but here's the thing. No one cared about what I was sharing. No one responded to any of my personal outreach messages. And I decided to stop after three months and spending a um, couple or a few thousand dollars, right? So the results was, was actually negative. I lost money on this. And I researched, like, what, what do I do now? And I researched, did a bit light research and to, to discover that really the people who, and, and the experts, the professionals who have thriving business are just, more patient than you know than, than I was at the time. And there is really truth in building a business one connection at a time. Today I, I just ran into yet another benefit of doing it that I want to show I want to show you and share with you here um, in, a, in a moment. But I realized that yes, there is a way to build a business and the thriving business uh, with lots and lots and lots of opportunities. If you understand that, you know, the promise of technology does not replace who we are as a species. We are social animals. We like to connect with, with one another. There's also a, a famous say 
uh, by somebody I can't remember the name, but uh, ask me if I, I'll do some research for you. The say is that you only need at the most 1,000 people to build a, uh, a, a really solid business with a team. And I'm not going to give you uh, ranges in terms of revenue because it varies based on what you do. But 1,000 true fans will be more than you need to really build an exciting business. It's all about the alignment between your audience and what you provide, the authenticity and the engagement. So I was at this point uh, and I had several thousands of people in my LinkedIn connection and I decided, okay, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and reinvent this. And uh, starting to uh, also look at my email list. I had at the time about 300 and 350 people on my email list. I, my plan was if, linked, if the LinkedIn machine had been successful, I was planning on doing the same for my email list and grow it, grow it uh, fast and big. And I realized uh, yet again, so that for my email list, my plan was going to be all about um, authenticity, connection, and really alignment. So here is why I did this. The first thing, uh, the first benefit that I want, uh, I want to share with you is that you, you really think you understand your business, but you really don't. And if, if you're in that situation, what I mean by this is that you don't really understand the, the deep reasons why people come to you, your value proposition, why people coming, you know, keep coming back. You, you also, it's really also takes a long time to get to really what is different in the way you approach your work. And if you put some kind of, of an automation on the situation, all it does is that it amplifies the problem. Your message is unclear. You're misaligned with your ideal client. You, you just don't know who exactly your ideal client is. And all of a sudden, you try to automate this, and it creates more mess, more chaos than, than something. So the first benefit of going small is, yet again, to prototype your positioning and prototype the alignment as you develop content, as you share uh, you know, your thoughts, as you invite people to your webinars, go little by little by little. Another benefit, it's in random order, just as, just as I think through them. Another benefit I saw is that, would you rather be invited, invited sorry, <laughs> to this gigantic dance party? They call them a rave party. Would you be rather invited to, to this, this, this multi-thousands of people dance party or to, um, uh, to, a, to, a, to a more and, and just be uh, by a stranger without friends, with you know, no one you know? Or would you rather be invited to a smaller concert where you can see the artist, you can talk to the artist at the end, it's really more intimate and, and comfortable? Right. Well, I realized that for my audience, my specific audience, they wanted to be in a more intimate setting to be able to ask questions and get to know each other, um, create a sense of community, uh, read each other's feedback and so on. So this was a smaller size audience was really more conducive to that, more authenticity, more human relationships. If you have a business that is more conducive to a larger, bigger uh, you know, big, big, big network, then great. But I feel like for a lot of us, smaller boutique consulting firms, that's one of the things you want to be able to create with people you want to help. Like it's really that, that kind of small setting. It's easy to, to be scared about this approach and feel like, oh my gosh, it's going to take a long time. Yes, it does take some time, but I feel like the benefits of sustainability, uh, and I'll get into that third benefit in a moment, just outweigh uh, the problems that you run into because it takes a lot of time. So third, third benefit, third benefit here is um, the fact that once you really connect, once you have the smaller audience, once you really understand who your ideal client is, what they want to buy, what kind of money they have, what kind of budget they have, 
what kind of format of experience or product they want they're they're willing to buy what kind of problem they're they're willing to solve once you've done this work and you really understand this and really get into their mind which is something you can only do again at a small scale not at a, at a large scale they become your biggest fan and i was making the comment to a colleague earlier today that I've been doing webinars now since uh, mid 2021. So that will be uh, two and a half years. And uh, at, different, at different cadences, you know, at first it was every week, then it became dormant a bit, then, then every month. And now it's every month. And I have, I can think of a handful of people who came to every single event. They became diehard fans. Did they buy something from me? Uh, most of them didn't, but did they talk about me? Did they give me feedback? Did they give me testimonials? Did they encourage me? Did they cheer for me? Did they question? Did they help me make my 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 perspective stronger and clearer? Yes, 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 yes to all these questions. And this has so much value, so much value there. It's like live market research. And then really establishing those that 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 fan base that will carry over and follow you where whatever you do where, wherever you go you know it's like all of a sudden you feel like you have a movement with you and yet again that is so ingrained in how we operate as human beings like we create movements and that's that's how we create change so that drives the energy for metahelm those fans and if you're watching this video I want to thank you so much. Thank you so much for continuing to interact with my thoughts, my ideas. I would love to hear more from you, but that's for another day. Let's carry on with the benefits of a small size audience here. Um, another one, a very practical one now, uh, and, and a tip that I shared with, uh, with a colleague of mine I was talking to this morning on, on LinkedIn, if you start doing events, like I do a webinar once a month, at the, the, the last Thursday of the month, I do a one hour webinar, um, 9 a.m. Pacific every last Thursday of the month. You know, Check it out, sign up. Well, when it comes to inviting people and LinkedIn, for instance, does not let you do this automatically. You have to go one by one. Going through... 10,000, 27,000 27, connections takes an enormous amount of time. But going through 1,000 connection is a lot easier, right? So, so that's a huge benefit there. Time saving and again, relationship building. So what you do is that you go to LinkedIn, you create your event, and then once it when it, when it's ready to be shared, LinkedIn suggests contacts you could reach out, or categories of contact through cate you know professional categories, and then you go there and you have to click you know you you can click a chunk chunks at a time, but it takes time still, and so that is a lot faster to do, right? So which means that you can customize and you can expand your invitation sequence to other methods, other channels, which increases your sign up rate which increases your attendance rate, which increases your, um, your, your, your number of leads and your pipeline, which grows your business, which makes you happy, blah, 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 blah. You see, it's like a cascade of benefits after that. So that's another benefit I want to share with you is technically a lot easier to manipulate. Another benefit I have felt through the strategy of, of uh, building this authentic and hard-based and smaller community is, um, is the emotional value uh, that it brings. And I, I touched a little bit on this you know, in my previous uh, with the fan, the, the, the fans that you build there. But when you, when you, when you really build a firm on, on those uh, you know, handcrafted connections, you get to better, much better understand what the values that your business is going to represent because you see um, very clearly and, and a lot faster than if you had a bigger, you know, huge audience all of a sudden, the values for which people uh, want to work with you, the values that resonates, that resonate with them. So 
And that is, that is, in my opinion, worth. <laughs> he can't really quantify money-wise how much it's worth, maybe millions. But if you start a business from that angle, it's just a recipe for massive success. So can I predict the, the, the levels of success of MetaHelm? How much money I'm going to make in three, five, 10 years, 20 years? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. And then I certainly don't put that in my business plan. I would, I, I avoid and I recommend that you avoid making too many wild guesses about how much money you can make. But what you can control, and that's another benefit, I will, I will leave you with that, what you can control with a smaller audience and with that approach is the fact that you will show up every day in front of you because in front of them and you, <laughs> you will show up relentlessly. It's going to be a habit that you create that brings joy to you. So it's the emotional value that you bring that will make you want to connect, serve, understand, meet, listen to your audience over and over and over and over again. It's about the alignment between you, your life, what you're supposed to do here, and the people that are around you that uh, are here to potentially join you on your journey, work with you even. I have I've had people in my audience because I, because, oh, oh, another benefit. Sorry, didn't, didn't mention this. Oh, biggest, one of the biggest benefit maybe, maybe, is that I have had people um, contact me because they feel like, I am more approachable, that I care, that I respond to their messages because it's a smaller scale. So I, I can customize my... I have people contacting me to, to ask if they could work with me, right? So the hiring process, the recruiting process is cost nothing. <laughs> of course, we have to see if there's a position for... And if you're one of these, you know, I, I'm planning on building a team here uh, bigger than the one I have, growing it, uh, because I need to, I want to serve more people. Uh, but but one thing at a time, as I as I share in this video, but um, people connect, you know, contact with contact me and and connect with me and say, hey, you know, I I'd love to to collaborate with you, and they do this because they really understand what I do, what I stand for, what I defend, my goals, and the way I want to proceed with my methodology, strategic narrative. So we, we think very short term about the people we can attract from the marketing and, and sales side. But we, I feel like we really underestimate that if we want to have a successful business, we're going to need help, right? We're going to need some help. We can't do that ourselves, just ourselves. And if you build really a, an authentic small scale audience the way I just described now, Everything applies to recruiting and hiring. So you decrease your risks of poor hiring because there's, there's better alignment. You know, we understand each other. We know what we stand for. Okay. Uh, you lower your cost because, because people want to, people are contacting you. You don't have to hire an agency or recruiter, or maybe you can hire one, but it, it complements you know, very well. So it's, le it's less stressful, less arduous, less costly. Yeah, and then there's just more excitement, more joy, and you know, it makes for a better team. There you go. So I hope this is helpful. I hope that this helped you move forward with, with building an audience with more realistic expectations, with also a sense and a feeling that you shouldn't wait too long because now that you know that it's okay if at least your audience is just your mom, your dad, your friends, your colleagues, you know, start small and, and then snowball with it. You're not going to wait any, any longer. But I wish you good luck. I wish you a lot of joy. And I hope that my little sermon today, <laughs> a little longer than usual, is helpful to you. Uh, and that you will, you will really explore the, the potential of small scale, authentic audience that is in front of you. Good luck. Uh, as always, I welcome your questions and comments. I would love to hear about how audience building is, is going for you. And I look forward to uh, chatting with you in the next video. Take care.